Hi, my name is Brian Kaplan. Welcome to uh, the third episode of Fully Cloudy, where I talk about my trials and tribulations of trying to do data science on a Chromebook. Uh, Jeff Leak was ahead of me on this. Um, he and Roger Pang and I kind of had a bit of a competition where he was trying to use a Chromebook, I was trying to use an Android phone, and Roger was trying to use an iPad to kind of push all of our work on those things. Obviously, the phone was a bit ambitious and it didn't work out very well. Roger's still trying to use the iPad, but he still has to do a lot of, um, you know, uh, regular laptop and computing to to kind of fill in the gaps. But the Chromebook seems to work out well, um, something I've switched over to and Jeff's been doing for a while. So I wanted to go over this blog post he had, uh, Data Science on a Chromebook. And um, first, let, let, let's just go through the um, software that he talks about. And then I'm going to talk about some software that I think is, is useful on top of these. So he talks about Google Slides for presentation. That's clear. Um, Google Docs and Paper Pile. I don't use Paper Pile, but Google Docs for sure. Doc Hub, I don't use that, but I'll talk about what I do use. Um, Overleaf for writing LaTeX. Uh, Overleaf and Share LaTeX have merged, so there's no distinction between those two now at this point. Um, Gmail, I use Inbox in, in Gmail. Um, Google Sheets for uh, data for spreadsheet program, yeah, so I use that. Um, DigitalOcean for our studio, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Google Hangouts for video conferencing. Um, you, you know, I also use Skype. Um, there's a there's a web version of Skype, and then also most of the modern Chromebooks have um, Android apps built in, and you can use the Android Skype as well. Uh, Slack for communication, I use Slack. Uh, Google Music, I use Google Music too. Uh, TweetDeck, I don't use TweetDeck. I you know I manage actually kind of a lot of Twitter accounts for the department for my department and everything. So I actually have a Hootsuite account, so I use Hootsuite. Um, so Wi-Fi connectivity issues, he discusses, um, it is a little bit annoying to actually sometimes, uh, configure Wi-Fi for a Chromebook. Um, for some reason, it's sometimes a little bit harder than it is. I noticed on my laptop, but I seem to have gotten over that problem. Um, and like him, I, I tether through my phone a lot when I'm not in a place where I have Wi-Fi. Um, so Wi-Fi blocking of a server um, I haven't run into that uh, too often, but I think the one time I did, what I what I have is I have a um, a domain that I registered at, at Namecheap, and I route my server through that domain, and then it might block the IP, but it won't block the registered domain that I have on Namecheap. So I kind of go around it that way. Um, and then, okay, so let me talk about the other software that I think is useful um, here as well. So uh, for note-taking, um, I'll have a separate episode where I talk about the different note-taking apps. So I, so Google Keep is one, Evernote is another, and OneNote is another. They're all really good. Um, I tend to use Evernote. That, that's the one I, I use the most. But I'll have a separate episode where I go through all the different aspects of the three of those. You're, you're actually in good, good luck with um, note-keeping software because there's a bunch of really good ones to choose from. I talked about WeVideo already. That's a, actually a really good Chromebook solution for video editing. Screencastify, that's what I'm making this video with right now. It's pretty easy. Um, Paper Space, I used to have a, a hosted Windows PC. Um, I should have also said Remote Desktop, um, but that's not very Chromebooky to actually have a desktop running somewhere, but I still just have a legacy desktop running in my office. So I'll Remote Desktop into that um, just uh, you know every now and then to get a file that I had forgotten about. Um, uh, for document signing, I, you know, my, my Chromebook has a stylus and there's like a bunch of Android apps and, uh, where you can uh, annotate PDFs and Word documents. So I just use that, uh, for servers, in addition to DigitalOcean, which Jeff mentions, I use LightSail and then EC2. And I like the fact with EC2 that you can make, um, copies of your AMIs. Uh, I like that feature a lot so that if I kind of build up a nice AMI, um, that I can, you know, kind of save it as, an, you know, save it and re-spool up other instances of it really quickly. Uh, for storage, I use S3, Dropbox, and Google Drive, um, but mostly Google Drive, but these other things for kind of idiosyncratic uses. Uh, YouTube has some interesting video editing software that's like, if you need a really quick video edit and you're putting it up on YouTube anyway, um, that's probably the fastest way to do it. And then also one of the bits of software that I use the most is there's a, a Google SSH app that comes with Chrome that you can use to, you know, kind of log into your servers. You can um, do uh, the public key encryption stuff so that you don't have to type in passwords and that works really well. 
as well. So anyway, this is some additional software on top of what Jeff Jeff uh, suggested. I would you know look over his blog post; it's really good. And you know, going on in the next couple of weeks, I'll talk about some of the other software that I'm using. I think the next thing I'll probably do is talk about the different note taking software. And then I just got a new uh, write on like uh, analog writing um, uh, pad that has this interesting kind of cloudy aspect to it where you take pictures and it uploads it to the, to the cloud. Okay, so I'll see you next week. That's my list of software, uh, kind of essential software right now. And I'll, I'll see you next week and we'll cover each of these in greater detail and some new ones as well.